I think that's what Whitehead calls the inversion of Kant. And I think he's re really right. Because that's a shift from a pre-Copernican vantage point from within subject, where the world is a derivative of the subject. That's the basis of idealism. To a view where the subject is a derivative of the world. And that's a post-Copernican view. Yeah? For, for pre-Copernican, the rest of the universe was a derivative of the Earth. Yeah, very clear. Whereas for post-Copernican, the Earth is a derivative, genetically and so on, of the universe. So same here. Yeah? So here, in Kant, the world was a derivative of the subject. Whereas for Whitehead, inverts Kant, or changes his vantage point, to a vantage point from beyond subject. And by that he can see how the subject is derived from the world. So now I'm asking, so then he, in my terms, he establishes a world-self relationship. So now I'm going back. Uh, what are the necessary conditions of the possibility of that world-self relationship? And that leads me to the world-brain relationship. Yeah? And I say that is the necessary condition of the possible self-slash-world-self relationship. Yeah? So I would argue that the distinction between world-brain relationship and brain-world relationship you can only grasp if you grasp the difference between a pre- and post-Copernican view of the relationship between world and brain. If you don't make that post-Copernican shift to a vantage point from beyond brain, which enables you to see that the brain is part of the wider world as a whole, the merological confusion is lurking here, yeah, part whole, then you will not be able, be able to understand the distinction between world brain and brain world relationship. And that happens to me usually in the Anglo American world, because they don't get this distinction. Yeah? So I would argue that much of philosophy of mind and also neuroscience is very pre Copernican. So it's a very immature stage. I know that's a bold statement. Yeah.